Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stumwebs' webinar about nuclear reactors. In the first part, I will lead you through this presentation, through the theory of it, about fusion and fission. And in the second part, I will show you a model of fission and fusion reactors made in Minecraft, where you can apply your knowledge. So fission versus fusion, do you know these terms? Because they are different. Nuclear fission is when heavy nuclei split into two smaller parts in order to become more stable. So you can see that neutrons going into that uranium-235 nucleus, and when it hits, it's going to split the nucleus into two smaller nucleus, uh, nuclei, which will then release energy and more neutrons. Nuclear fusion, on the other hand, is when light and nuclei are fused together to form a heavier nucleus. So as you can see, those this deuterium nucleus and this tritonium nucleus are both fusing together to form a helium nucleus, energy, and an extra neutron, which flies away. And fusion is not fission. They're two different things. And as I mentioned, in nuclear fission, one splits a large nucleus into pieces to gain energy, and the other one um, builds larger nuclei from two smaller nuclei. So nuclear reactors are reactions involving changes in the atom. Nuclear reactions release much more energy than chemical reactors, which only deal with electrons. E equals mc squared. This is Einstein's famous equation that relates mass and energy. And energy and mass here are interchangeable. And c actually means the speed of light. When, when a high energy gamma ray is given off, the mass of the nucleus drops a measurable value. Similarly, we can calculate how much energy will be given off in particular nuclear reactions. We use the formula E equals mc squared to build new artificial elements in super colliders or particle accelerators. So in this diagram, this is another diagram on how nuclear fission works. And we already went over this, but yeah, it's the splitting of large unstable atoms and it releases a lot of energy. An uncontrolled nuclear fission proceeds to completion within very, very, very fast. It completes very fast, but releases a lot of heat. A nuclear fusion is, a nuclear fission is actually used in nuclear weapons and power plants, and it's uranium-235 that's used. And in a nuclear weapon, two half spheres of fissionable material are compressed together with conventional explosives, creating the critical mass. In order to harness nuclear fission, all right, fission reactor power plants. In each reactor, heat is generated when high energy of neutrons slow down in collisions with the moderator. Pressurized steam reactor, and this is the, that's the diagram, and steam is produced and it drives turbines, creating electricity. And the reactor fuel must be finishable. It's usually weapons grade uranium or plutonium, and moderators become highly radioactive. And uranium-238 is the isotope that's not fissionable, but the uranium-235 is fissionable, meaning it can be used. Anyways, nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is when two smaller nuclei are joined to form larger nuclei. This process releases far more energy than nuclear fission, about three to four times as more. nuclear fusion. And another cool fact is that the sun's energy comes from the fusion of hydrogen atoms into helium atoms. The hydrogen bomb is actually a fusion weapon, and extensive research is being carried out to find ways of creating and harnessing nuclear fusion for industrial power production. Unlike fission, fusion reactors can, fusion reactions can be easily controlled by controlling the fuel flow. 
All right, and that's the difference between fission and fusion reactors and reactions. Yeah. All right, and now, now I'm actually gonna talk about one more thing today, and that is chemical reactions. And, all right, chemical reactions or reactors, if you wanna be fancy. Chemical reactors are an industrial, and yeah, an industrial chemical reactor is a complex device in which heat transfer, mass transfer, diffusion, and friction may occur, along with chemical reaction with provisions of safety and controls. They're pretty much vessels designed to contain chemical reactions. There are two main basic vessel types. There's the pipe, and the and then there's the tank. And the different types of reactions are a direct combination or synthesis reaction, which is where two reactants are reacted together to form a product, which is usually a combination of those two reactants. Or it, it's actually always a combination of those two reactants. And a chemical decomposition is when a, a compound is reacted, is broken down, it's decomposed into it's bare things it's it's bare products and exothermic reactions release energy in the form of heat light or sound and a reaction rate is the speed at which a chemical reaction proceeds in terms of amount of product formed or amount of reactant consumed per unit of time and these are the factors influencing reaction rate there's the concentration of the reactant, the nature of the reaction. So for example, some some sort some types of reactions may have may react faster than other types of reactions. The temperature at which the reaction is being performed, the pressure at which it's being performed, and the presence of a catalyst if if the catalyst is there. So there's the modeling principle. Inputs plus the sources equals the output plus sink plus accumulations. And, and at the top here, we have what looks like a chemical reactor, which separates, um, which separates sewage into clean drinking water. This is actually used in real life inside of water treatment plants. And at the bottom here, we have a simple diagram of a chemical reactor in which two pumps are pumping react reactants into a reactor vessel where there where there's a mixer which then mixes the reactants and lets them react and then it creates a product which is sent out through another pipe and cat and catalysts these these actually accelerate the rate of the chemical reaction And here are the kinds of catalysts. You have strong acids, you have base catalysts, you have metal oxides, sulfides, and hydrides, metal and alloys, and transition metal organometallic catalysts. And what that basically means is it's a transition, it's a transition metal, which means the, the rectangle in the periodic table. And organometallic means that there is a organic compound mixed in within the metal. All right, so these are the different types of, of chemical reactors you can find. And that's it for chemical reactors. All right, now I'm going to share my screen so, you, uh, so I can show you the fusion and fission reactors. All right, so, so this right here, is a fusion reactor, or a fission reactor, my bad, sorry. And pretty much, um, give me a second. All right, so this is a, this is a fusion, or this is a fission reactor, 
And I don't have anything in it right now, but I can put reactor cell. I can put a reactor cell inside of the reactor and it's using the fission reactors to house the fission fuels. And essentially what this means is that in each of these react reactor cells is the fission fuel. And so, however, this is not enough for the fission reactor to um to work because I will need coolant. Like I will I will need a water cooler. I will need water coolers placed between the reactor cells so that the reaction can be controlled. So when I go, so when I seal this reactor closed, then we have a reactor, it's ready to go. Now, all I have to do is get some fuel and, and here's how you get fuel. This right here is highly enriched uranium-235. And as I mentioned earlier, uranium-235 is the stuff that can be fissionable. So when we put one piece of fuel into the reactor, we can then flip a lever over here this will cause a reactor to start reacting. And as you and as you can see, the reaction is actually generating a lot of energy right now, but it's also generating a lot of heat. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'll actually turn off the reactor so we can so we can improve its cooling system so it doesn't doesn't you know burn the entire reactor down. I'm gonna replace it with some coolers that are that should be better. All right, there. Now that the cooling, now basically these are cooling. This is cryothium, and it's a fictional material that cools better than water. So. It should allow our reactor to um, work. There. All right, now that this reactor is sealed, our reactor should be should have a better cooling. All right, as you can see, our reactor is seems to be still still seems to be heating up. However, it's heating up less. And so, yeah, so I'm going to turn it off for now just to let it cool down a little bit. And as you can see, it's storing a lot of energy, which it's not really represented here, but these reactor cells basically have basically have the entire water system inside where they produce steam and they spin a turbine. So yeah, this is a simplification. Yeah. And as you and I'm gonna turn on the reactor again and show you what happens when when the when this bar gets full because that's when the fuel gets depleted actually. So, I can, so as you can see here, the reactor is heating up once again, and I'm gonna have to let it cool off one more time so that the reactor doesn't doesn't burn. I'm actually gonna put some yeah. all right, I put some better cooling in so I can show you the rest of what happened. All right now, now as you can see, it's generating. Uh, yeah, it's generating now. And it's about to be done. All right. So this is depleted um highly enriched uranium fuel. And that's that's pretty much what happens in a new in a nuclear fission reactor. It takes in this fuel, it gets put in the system right here where it reacts, 
and it turns into depleted fuel because it doesn't have any more fission product inside of it. So, so I'm, I'm going to show you what happens if a fission reactor actually gets too hot. And this is what we call a meltdown. So when this, so, so wait, let me close it up because I forgot to close it. So what, see, as you can see, the heat is going up. And when that bar reaches the top, the reactor is actually going to pretty much essentially melt like this. So, so that, uh, so that lava, that's actually called corium. And corium is essentially the reactor cells, the, the fuel mixed with all the other reactor components. And this is what happened actually in 1986 during the Chernobyl incident where the reactor pretty much just melted, melted down. And this is what you want to avoid. All right, now I'm going to show you fusion. Now this one is a little bit more complicated, but it shouldn't be too hard to understand. Now, for so, now in the simulation, the, the fusion reactor, it actually needs energy to function. So this is a infinite energy emitter. And essentially what it does is it sends energy into these components. And then what happens is actually, and here's what happens. So it sends energy into these components and actually have um two two um what's it called infinite fluid generators that generate tritium, which is which is this element. And essentially what tritium is, is it's a isotope of hydrogen, which is one of the main fusion fuels. And it also generates deuterium, which is also a fusion fuel. It's a another isotope of hydrogen. And essentially what happens in here is all of this energy, which is needed to start the reactor, actually gets sent, actually um, creates a lot of heat and pressure inside of the reactor. And this is what causes it to, um, and this is what starts causing, this is what causes it to start fusing. And in the output, in the output, we can actually see that it's full of helium plasma. So two isotopes of hydrogen were combined, were fused in this reaction to form helium. And this is just a simulation. So there's a fi so there's a fictional power output. There's a a fictional way to um generate power. So basically, what happens is this helium plasma is actually piped into this into this plasma turbine and this plasma turbine essentially what it does in this fictional and this like simulation is it it actually it actually spins and then it produces power and all that's left after it spins and produces power from the helium plasma is is helium at a normal temperature so if we look at this large plasma turbine we can see that it's it, we can see that it's generating 65,000 energy units per second per tick. Or, yeah. In this simulation, 20 ticks is a second. So this is currently generating about, I'd say, a mi I'd say a million. Oh, what's it called? I'd say actually a million energy units per second. So, yeah. Yeah, fusion generates a lot more power than that. So... Oh, and another thing I forgot to um, mention is that is that there's also chemical reactors in this, and I'm actually gonna show you what a chemical reactor looks like and how it works. So, so this is a uh, so this is the um, the ultimate chemical reactor, and essentially, what this is is right is it combines liquids right here and there's a solid input and pretty much what you can do and pretty much i'm going to give you an example right now 
of a chemical reaction that can be done in this chemical reactor. So, so for example, you have water. Oh, water. For example, you have water. And then you have, and then you can take salt. And this isn't really a chemical reaction, but it's whatever. And essentially, actually, actually, hold on, that's my bad, because because when you put salt and water together, it actually mixes it. The the water, the salt actually dissolves. So. An example of a chemical reaction, for example, is the reaction between sodium hydroxide, bismol A, and epic chlorohydrin. And essentially what this react and let me get those two those reaction reactors. And get those react. Bismol A and epic chord. Now, essentially, now essentially, what this reaction is supposed to do is it's supposed to take these constituents and it's supposed to and it's supposed to use them. See, see, all right. See the reaction's working. It's cre and it's using these to create epoxy resin and salt water. And yeah, that's essentially how how chemical react reactions work in the simulation. So, all right, all right. So we have run out of time. So let's summarize what we have researched today. So we reviewed the science basis on fission and fusion reactors, and played around with mine and play, played around with the reactors in Minecraft. So any questions? All right, thank you for your time. And remember that we will always be doing webinars like these at STEM webs. So if you wanna see more, stick around.